Hello, Modern here. In today's video, I want to show you another technique built for Lies of P based on the booster glaive. To be more specific, I am looking at the amazing favorite art of the handle, which charges up an attack to deal devastating damage to any enemy hit. Given we are looking at a favorite art build, we are dependent on ways to regenerate our resources. But that's not all this build is based around. The moveset of the booster glaive allows for multiple approaches to fights, with the most prominent being the charge attack combined with a hit and run playstyle. This build comes online as soon as you get to the factory with the booster glaive sitting behind the puppet of the future, ripe to be harvested and utilized. Progressing with this one, you're only going to change the blade, never the handle. Now first let's have a look at regular enemies and mini bosses. Most won't survive the onslaught of your attacks. You hit very, very hard, especially with the right amulets and P-organ upgrades, which in turn allow for brute forcing your way through the game. There are not many foes that can withstand you, but for those that do, just rip possession and do it again. This time with charge attacks instead of the fabled arts. Later you will be able to upgrade the blade of this weapon to increase its properties even further, smoothing out the gameplay more and more. And as for bosses, we are looking at a bit more nuance in play. Mix in charge and light attacks in between smaller openings, while exploiting critical openings or longer delays after attacks to unleash fabled arts. Later you will be able to access the live puppet axe, which features a fast and very strong chop art. Another way to improve this weapon is through the use of the good old saw blade, which extends the range and allows for more consistent play, especially versus the Brotherhood boss fights. And as with any build, we can further optimize gameplay through the use of fitting grindstones and throwables, as well as fable catalysts, which are thrown at you throughout the whole game. Next let's have a look at the attributes for this build and how to progress your character. So we are going to start with the dexterity path. This will give us access to the rapier, which is an amazing weapon early on, and we get a decent stat lineup. As for how we are going to spec this one, go with 15 vitality first to expand your health pool, so you're not getting one shot, gives you a little bit more lenience, especially on this build. Next boost up your vigor to match 15, capacity to 10, then your technique to 15 to boost your damage, match your capacity next to 15. At this point you will have access to the booster glaive which will then warrant a little bit more weight. So you can equip this one without dipping into the slightly heavy domain. So in the top right corner you can see a percentage number near the weight. Keep this one at 59 or less, it is very important, you're going to drastically decrease the stamina regeneration of your character if you go above 59%. Then boost your technique to 30, we are going to want as much damage as possible, especially early on. Boost your capacity in between, so whenever you find another frame, boost your capacity a few points so you can equip it. The damage reduction is going to come in very handy. Before the Puppet King, boost your vitality and vigor to 18, this will make sure you are not getting one shot and you have enough stamina to block through his attacks. Afterwards, boost your technique as much as possible, but also keep your capacity high enough so you can equip your better frames. You're going to get less and less damage through technique. 40 is the limit. It is not worth putting more points into technique at this point. Boost your capacity afterwards as well as your vitality and vigor so you have better utility, better movement, better defenses. So as mentioned before, we are going to start with the Wintry Rapier. This one is an amazing weapon with a top tier moveset. All your attacks are stabs, so you have light attacks that move you forward and stab the enemy. Your charge attack move you forward and stab the enemy. Your dodge attack stabs the enemy. Your blade dart deals amazing damage and stabs the enemy. Now you can follow up with a charge attack, but you need to take care of not getting hit. And you can stagger enemies to strike them critically. Very fun weapon, especially early on, but it gets a bit monotonous. Now to improve this weapon, we can buy the Great Sword of Fate before the first boss. There is a vendor, a merchant, which sells the starting weapons, so get this one and improve the blade. This will increase the damage reduction rate, increase the damage, increase the charge pulse cells recharge rate and give you better fable charge at the cost of weight. So at this point you want to increase your weight capacity through increasing capacity. You can safely upgrade the sword to plus 3, you get more than enough resources and it will come in very very handy. Once you get to the factory, so after the third boss, you will get access to the booster glaive, which is going to be a go-to weapon. It has great damage reduction because of the blade, it has great properties, regenerates fabled art charges really fast, and has B technique scaling because of the handle. The technique scaling of the handle can then be further upgraded through a technique rank. So do this because this one gives you a ton of damage. The light attacks of this weapon are sweeping attacks, but they are fairly slow, so not really sufficient for what we are going to want to do. It is much better to just dodge roll, attack one time and follow up with a sweeping attack. The dodge attack is going to be a much better light attack than what you usually have access to. 
So dodging and then attacking is going to be your moveset for poking enemies. If you want to strike them really hard, go for the charge attack. It's a dash with a strike attached right at the end. You can safely follow this one up with another strike from the other side. It's going to charge the blade, but you're not going to waste time on steps. You can hold the charge attack or release it earlier. If you release this one earlier, you're not going to dash to the enemy. It's just a strike. The blade art is going to be a two hit combo. You're going to dash to the enemy, hit in one time and then another one. This can stagger enemies so you can follow up with a critical strike. Your handle art can be charged up so it's going to use two or three charges. It's going to hit two times and deal devastating damage to the enemy. Here again, charge up, hit them two times. The damage is roughly the same as with the blade. The blade deals 1500, the charged up handle art is going to deal 1800 roughly. If you do not charge this one up, just release it, it's going to just hit one time, deals 1000 damage, is a very fast hit. Upgrade the booster glaive to plus 6 to really get the performance up and running, but do not upgrade it any further. At this point it's just not worth it and you can find a better weapon right after the archbishop boss. So the first upgrade is going to be the bone cutting saw blade. This one increases the physical damage, the charge pulse cells rate, the fable art charge rate and the damage reduction of this weapon. The weight is also going to increase, so match your capacity and the range of this weapon is going to increase. It's basically double the length, so your attacks are going to hit targets further away. However, you're going to lose the fabled art attack of the blade, because this one is going to be not really useful. It's a two-step attack, first strike, charged, second strike. It's going to deal massive amounts of damage, but we can also just charge the handle and deal roughly the same damage without the need to do this in two steps. Later on you can find another upgrade. This one is more of a sidestep. You're going to sacrifice range in favor of damage. You can find the Life Puppet's Axe Blade, which will increase the physical damage, which will increase the charge pulse cells rate, as well as the fable charge rate, and you're going to increase the damage reduction while guarding. You're going to see the target you're fighting, because this one is kept low on the ground and not on your shoulder, like other great swords. The range is going to suffer a little bit, but as you can see, you're still going to hit enemies for a ton. And your fable art charge is going to change to a chop attack. Costs only two fable charges, but it cannot stagger enemies. Now, as for the locations of the weapons, the Wintry Rapier can be obtained by choosing the Path of the Bastard. It's the Dexterity starting weapon. It can also be purchased from the Wandering Merchant for 300 Ergo. This merchant is found before the first boss. The Booster Glaive can be found in a chest behind the Puppet of the Future in the factory. You can loot it while the puppet is still functioning, but you can also drain the Poison Swamp just by progressing through the factory. So you can get this one early at a little bit of risk, or you can wait and get this one safer. The next one is going to be the Bone Saw Blade. This one can be found in a chest on the rooftops, surrounded by a lit symbol of the Black Rabbit Brotherhood in the Malum district. It's guarded by a large carcass enemy that can throw acid, it's right behind it. And in this plaza there is a really dangerous carcass enemy that drops a really good stamina amulet, but you can for now safely skip this one and come back later with the saw blade to really rip him a new one. And the last upgrade is the Life Puppet's Axe. The Life Puppet's Axe is located in a barren swamp. Teleport to the gazer with the red glowing puppet, go back to the area without the puppets of the future, travel to the top of the tower in this zone to find the chest containing the weapon. Next let's have a look at the legion arm, we're going to utilize the puppet string. So you get the puppet string very early on, you'll be able to pull in enemies with this one and later on at the fourth upgrade you can hold the ability and then perform this attack. This one can be performed over and over again. You can dodge over attacks with this one, but some enemies will hit you and will knock you down on the ground, so you're going to lose the legion charge and the attack and you're going to be damaged. Really look for openings, it's really good versus the last boss, it's really good versus the second last boss. There's a few enemies that are really prone to this one, they are going to release a red attack and you can jump over this one. The damage of the charge attack is dependent on the blade you're going to use, so a higher physical damage is going to deal more damage. Next I'm going to take a look at the amulets. We're going to start with the offensive one. We have the technique amulet here. This one is really good early on, but later on it falls off. So what I advise you to do is either go with the carcass butcherer's amulet, the murder puppet's amulet or the puppet destroy amulet. All of them increase the damage with a specific enemy type by 10%, which I highly recommend using over the technique amulet especially later on. The second amulet is going to be the carrier's amulet. This one gives you a ton of weight. It's around six capacity, so quite valuable. Next is the patient's amulet. This one increases the stamina recovery speed by 15%. This one is multiplicative, so if you go below 30%, you're going to see a massive increase in stamina regeneration. 
This amulet is really really good on all playthroughs. The weight is also not that detrimental. And the last one is going to be a defensive amulet. This one increases the physical damage reduction rate by quite a lot. It can however be exchanged for a little bit more damage if you want to. Great amulets to pick from are the extreme modification amulet, which increases the weapon attack in proportion to the number of fabled slots. It's a 20% increase in damage when 5 fable bars are full. It can be obtained by exchanging one broken hero's ergo to Alidaro. Another option is the Arm of the God amulet. This one temporarily increases the physical damage upon a successful attack. This one will be on the character for 5 seconds and increase the damage by 15% for multiple attacks. And the last one is the Awakened Gods amulet. This one increases the Fable Art damage inflicted on staggered enemies. So instead of performing a critical strike, you can perform a Fable Art and increase the damage by 20%. This one can be obtained by giving one Fallen Ones Ergo to Alidaro. All of those have very high weight requirements, so you need a lot of capacity for those. I highly recommend not going with the boss amulets in the first playthrough. Get them in New Game Plus, otherwise you're going to sacrifice too much defenses. Speaking of defenses, Let's go over the defensive parts. For the frame, go with the heaviest one you can equip without the penalty. So if you go to 60%, slightly heavy, do not equip it. Keep it below 60%. Same for the liner. The liner only contributes a small amount to the weight, so it's always worth equipping with the best one. Striking damage is very common in this game, but slashing damage is also very common for bosses, so switch those two accordingly. The converter is used for elemental resistances, so match this one to the zone and boss you're fighting. And the cartridge gives you special resistances, so match this one to the zone you're currently in. Equip the best one for the boss you're currently fighting. If you're fighting a boss that's going to deal a ton of disruption damage, you're going to want the disruption resistance cartridge. Make sure to equip the best one you can. Next let's talk a little bit about the grindstones. The best ones are the flame grindstone, the electric blitz grindstone and the acid grindstone. Flame grindstones are great versus carcass enemies, blitz is very good versus puppet enemies, and acid versus human enemies. Another great one is the perfection grindstones, which guarantees perfect guards when guarding. Very strong versus the last bosses. Next, where can you find the consumable vendor? Go to the Malum district at the Red Lobster Inn, walk inside, climb the ladder, and talk to the vendor. The best consumable is the shot put. This one can be used to stagger enemies at range, so buy as many as you can. Other consumables that are worth it are the thermite, the throwing cell and the carcass bodily fluid, all of which deal amazing damage and are really good options if you're struggling versus specific bosses. You can also find the abrasives for fire, electric and acid here. Saw blades can also be quite decent. And lastly the P organs. We're going to start with the increased pull cells and the link dodge, then pick up increased pull cells too and rising dodge. You can also pick up the additional amulet slot, but at this point you're probably not going to get much use out of this one. This one is really nice for the shovel enemies, especially at this stage of the game. So when you're getting hit, you can dodge out of the way and this one is really nice early on. Then pick up enhanced pull cell recovery too and go back for add amulet slot 1. At this point you should be able to unlock phase 4, go for add fable slot 1, add fable slot 2 in phase 4, go for another amulet slot, then a perfect guard causing stiffness, and finish up with increased special grindstone uses. The phase 5 stuff is generally not worth it, the additional legion arm is going to cost you a lot of capacity, cube uses are not that useful, retain guard region is also not that useful, and the stagger window is also not great. So you have much more utility in the first phases. As for what you are going to pick, enhanced charge stagger attacks, Fabled Art Attack, Perfect Guard Destruction, which comes in very handy versus specific humanoid bosses, especially versus the Brotherhood. Another Perfect Guard Destruction Enhance is also great versus the Brotherhood. Enhanced Charge Attack Stagger, Enhanced Fable Art Attack 2, lowering the weapon consumption rate at this point is also great. A lot of enemies are going to poison you, acid you, so that's also going to deteriorate your weapon. And Phase 5 will unlock increased stagger duration and enhanced fatal attack. However, the enhanced fatal attack is also kind of a trap. You only want to do the fatal attack if you do not have any fable. For survival, pick up all the pulse cell recovery or pulse cell capacity increases. At phase 2, you are also going to get the lower damage of charge attack and fable arts. This one decreases the damage you take while charging up your attack, which is really nice to have. Increase pulse cells 3, increase pulse cells 4 and 5. And then you can pick up perfect guard region recovery and enhanced guard region recovery too. 
The survival type is basically just for health recovery. The ability type has really nice stuff. You have lowering the charge, attack stamina consumption, perfect guard fable recharge, reduced stamina consumption while dashing. This one is the best thing you can get for quality of life. Your stamina consumption on a dash, so on running, is going to decrease by roughly 90%. So you basically have no stamina consumption while running. Lowering the weapon durability consumption while the weight increases. We are always going to have around 59% weight. So this one is really great. Charge fable when reviving. So when trying new bosses, you are going to die and run back to the boss. You're going to recover one fable charge automatically. So that's going to come in very, very handy. Then we have fatal attack fable charger. So when you're performing a fatal attack, you're going to recharge your fable bars. Without this one, you don't have access to this. You can also pick up Charge Legion when eliminating enemies. At this point, you have a ton of choices, so you don't actually have to pick this one, just if you like the Puppet String Legion arm. In Phase 5, you are going to pick up Auto Charge Legion, Perfect Guard Fable Charge Enhanced 2, and lowering the charge attack stamina consumption, all of which are really, really good and I think mandatory for the build. And for item types, since we are going to use a lot of catalysts, Consumable Possession plus one is really good. Fable Catalyst Effect plus one is also really good. Reducing the item prices comes in very handy. Charging Fable upon cell use is also really good. And Enhanced Fable Catalyst Effect 2 is also really, really good. So all of those are top tier. I didn't pick the item type because I wanted the power, but if you're comfortable with less health recovery or less pull cells, you can go for the item type. Same with the Fatal Attack Enhance or lowering your weapon durability consumption. You can instead pick a few item type perks. Now this sums up the build. If you found this one helpful, please leave a like. If you have any questions or remarks, please comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and you can join the channel membership or leave a donation if you have the spare coin. So see you next time and bye.